In this tutorial, we are going to demonstrate how to make use of the Create Job Sheet option within the software. Imagine to yourself you have just designed a project and now you wish to send it to the CNC operator to then run. Now most machines are controlled by PC, which do not have the design software installed on them. So how does the operator know what they are cutting and what size of material to use? How do they know what tool to use? How do they know what speeds and feeds the toolpaths are going to be running? This is where the job sheet comes in. It gives you a visual representation of the vectors that you plan to cut. It gives you the details about the material setup, toolpath summary of all the toolpaths, and then a breakdown of all the individual toolpaths that are on that particular job. All in a portable self-contained HTML file which you can open on any web browser and read from there or you can then print it off onto paper. So let's demonstrate how we can use this. So let's open a new copy of the software and let's open an existing file and from within the project folder let's select the widget-vector.crv and then press the open button and you'll see that we've got our design that we've got here. Now some of you may be familiar with this, this is our Vectric widget, this has been demoed on a few tutorials. Now I'm just going to give you an overview of our job here so that I can familiarise yourself with it a little bit before we actually go ahead and create our job setup sheet. So I'm just going to pin open the toolpaths tab at the same time and just to show you that the way our vectors have been organised. So we've got four layers and we've got four toolpaths as well. Now each one of these toolpaths is linked to one of these layers and each one of these uh, toolpaths has automatically selected uh, particular types of vectors on each of these layers. So we've got on the outline shape we've got uh, our outline for our uh, vector widget then we've got our recess rectangles which we then pocket and we've got our text and we've got our drill holes. Now if I just quickly double click on each one of these you'll see that it our vector selection has automatically uh, picked up these vectors here. Now that's because in the selector it's selecting closed vectors, all closed vectors on the layer recess rectangles and it's associated all these rules with this particular toolpath. So obviously if I needed to recalculate this in future it would always remember the uh, vectors which are selected there. So let's click close and that's the same for all of these. So we've got the profile text which is just profiling on our text there and then we've got our drill holes and then we've also got our profile cutout. So that gives you a brief idea of the way our job is set up and how the toolpaths are created. Now what we want to do now is we want to create a job sheet so that then we can then send that uh, along with our file to uh, the CNC operator. So how do we do that you may ask? Now before we can actually go ahead and create a job setup sheet we need to make sure obviously that we've got toolpaths in the toolpath list or it will throw up a little error just warning you that you need to create some toolpaths before it can go ahead and create you uh, a job setup sheet. So now we've got vectors and toolpaths on our job we just go over to the toolpaths on the toolbar select it and then at the bottom you'll see that there's a create job sheet option. So what you do is click that, it's going to then load up uh, a save as dialog and all you need to do is just give it a name. So I'm just going to keep this as the standard widget hyphen vector underscore summary dot html and then click save and that's it. All you need to do then is just navigate over to your folder which you saved it in like so and you'll find in here uh, the widget hyphen vector underscore summary dot html file. Now this file can be opened with a simple double click and it will open within your default web browser like so. The beauty of this file however is that it is completely self-contained so that if you need to email it or you need to put it onto a memory stick all you need is that one file and you can view it within any web browser. So let's start by running through some of the information available to us from our job setup sheet. Now the first thing you'll find is that the total of our work or what we saved our job as will be referenced within the header area of our job sheet and it will also be displayed in the title area of each browser tab that we've got open. So this is handy if we've got multiple job sheets open all with different names so that if we need to go to a specific job sheet we're not going through each and every single tab to try and find which job sheet is relevant to our current job that we're working on. We can just simply find the name and click on it and then our job sheet will be displayed. 
Now onto the main body of our job sheet. The first section that we come to is our job layout section. Now this section has been designed so that it gives us a visual idea of what we're working with. So the outermost vector that we've got displayed here is our material that we're going to be working with or our work area which we specified within the job setup. And with inside that we've got the vectors that we've created and we plan on machining. And just underneath the job layout section we have our material setup. So we know that this border represents a height of 9 inches and a width of 9 inches and now we also know the depth which is 3 eighths of an inch. Other information that we get, we get the home start position. So we've got x0, y0 and the z is 1 inch above the material. Now this is handy, so can it tell before we even start running the machine if we have enough z travel 1 inch above the material for the machine to operate. And then just below that we've got our z0 off the top of the block demonstrated here and we've got the xy datum position in the lower left hand corner and we've got a clearance above the material of 0 0.2 inches. Now this is handy to know obviously if we're going to be setting up clamps around the part so that we know to make sure that this value is higher than any clamps or anything that we may put in the way of the actual machine itself. And in the next section we get a toolpath summary of all the toolpaths that we're going to be running for this particular job. So in this particular job that we're demonstrating at the moment we've got four toolpaths gives you the name of each of the toolpaths, tells you the tool that they're going to be using and then it gives you an estimated time of how long it thinks that this toolpath may take uh, dependent on the ratio that's set within the software. And just below that we've got more detail on all the individual toolpaths for this particular job. So if we just scroll down we can see the four toolpaths that we're going to be running and each individual toolpath section will list you the name of the toolpath that's going to be run also tells you what type of toolpath it is, so this one is going to be a pocket and you can also see that the icon in the right hand corner also is the same icon that's used for these particular toolpaths within the software, so we've got a profile toolpath, a drilling toolpath and another profile toolpath. Within each of these individual toolpath summaries we've also got the feed rate which we're going to be using on the actual tool. We've also got the tool number, so if you're one that may have organized all their tools uh, with numbers which is a feature within the software to do so you can specify your tool number here and we've also got the plunge rate of our tools and again an estimated time and finally our spindle speed so before running any tool pass on the machine we can actually see uh, if the tool is being run too quickly or maybe not quick enough so that we can see before we run it if it's been run efficiently and if we need to make any changes to the toolpath. So let's close this example. I'm just going to close the web browser down and go back into the software. I'm just going to file and close this. And we're going to just demonstrate this job setup sheet on a different file. So let's go to open an existing file and let's navigate to the projects folder and select the multi-sheet cabinets.crv and press open. Now this is just going to demonstrate how we can go about creating different job sheets for each individual sheet. So if we just go over to the toolpaths tab, I've handily named each one of the toolpaths that are required for each individual sheet with a prefix. So we've got sheet 1, so we can see sheet 1 only has a profile cutout, whereas sheet 2, if we go to sheet 2, has all these different toolpaths relating to this particular sheet. So with that in mind, let's go over to the toolpaths on the toolbar and let's create a new job sheet. And we do this in exactly the same way. So all we do is give it a name, so I'm just going to call this multi-sheet hyphen cabinets underscore summary and press save. So nothing different there then. So let's just navigate over to where we've saved our job sheet. And you'll see that now we've got a different job sheet for every different sheet that was in our job. So all we need to do is simply select one, hold the shift key down, and press number 7, that will then highlight all of our job sheets and all we need to do then is right click and press open and you'll see that's opened all seven job sheets into our web browser and each one, if we just hover over each individual tab will tell us actually what sheet that is, so sheet 2, sheet 3, sheet 4, sheet 5, sheet 6 and sheet 7 and if we just individually click on those you'll see that uh, the vectors are all changing so to represent what is actually going to be machined on that particular uh, sheet of material and that changes for all different 
worksheets and you'll also notice that if you're looking down as well at the toolpath summary it is only listing the toolpaths that are actually current to the actual sheet that you're actually working on at that particular time so sheet one only has the profile cut out which is relevant to this particular sheet and sheet two has all the other toolpaths for the drilling holes and then the profiling as well and and the pocketing that's for the dado rails and these are all then given as a breakdown underneath that summary as well. So that just quickly demonstrates the usefulness of the Create Setup Sheet gadget when dealing with just a single job or maybe a multi-sheet job like this one here. Now we're not just limited to opening these HTML files on a PC, we can also print them off and then give them to our CNC operator. And if you're interested in finding out how we can go about printing these off and maintaining the appearance of the job setup sheet, keep watching as this final section is going to show you how to do that in the main three web browsers of Internet Explorer, uh, Google Chrome and Mozilla Firefox. And if this doesn't appeal to you, I'd just like to thank you for watching and I hope this has been useful to you. So, we're in Google Chrome at the moment, so I'm going to first of all demonstrate how to go about printing this in Google Chrome. So, you might think this is simple, it may be. So let's go to the options and let's go to print. And you'll see, within this print preview we've got here, we actually lose some of the styling. So we've lost all the images and we've also lost all the header information as well. Now, if this doesn't bother you, that's fine. You can go ahead and print this out as this is. So it will print out the sheets as displayed here. But if you don't actually want uh, the footer and header information, you do actually want the graphics. Uh, on the printout, all we need to do in Chrome is go to more settings and then turn off the headers and footers and turn on the background graphics here. And also, if we want to, we can change the default margins, so we may even want no margins. It will just fill the space of our sheet of A4 paper a bit more as well. Now, the setup sheet has been designed so that you will never get uh, half a toolpath summary or any of the fields uh, going between the two pages they will also they will always cut off at the bottom of the page so once you're happy with that you can go ahead and just click print so I'm just going to close Chrome down and I'm going to go back to my files and, and I'm just going to select one so I'm going to select sheet one I'm going to right click and I'm going to open this with Internet Explorer and within Internet Explorer we need to go to settings and then we need to go to print and then print preview and this will bring up a completely new layout and as you'll see what we've got at the moment doesn't really represent anything that we've just seen in the actual browser so to sort this we just need to go to this option here to the page setup and we just need to enable this option here to print background and color images and then press OK and you'll see that all of the uh, imagery and background information is now on the actual sheet and if we need to edit any of the other options like the margins so we may not want any margins for instance we can just wipe those out there and then click OK and we can go ahead then and click print and these options will stay active for the next time that you actually come to uh, use it and last but not least let's demonstrate this in Firefox so let's right click sheet 1 and then press open with and then let's select Firefox and again we go to options and we press the print button and this will load up uh, a print preview for us and as you can see that this has also lost all the imagery and background styling so all we need to do again with this one is go to page setup and just tick on the option for print background colors and images and press OK and that will then reload the page uh, as it was intended and all we need to do is then just print this out as well I'm just going to close this and just go back to our work and that now brings us to the end of this tutorial so I hope that we've learned something along the way and that we can make use of the job setup sheet so I thank you for watching